Hello everyone, this is Kamakshi Nagar, Junior Resident in the Department of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology at Ames BB Nagar. I am here to discuss age estimation based on x-rays of hand and wrist. Before actually we start about it, talking about the need. So why do we need to estimate age from hands and wrist x-rays or for that matter anywhere in the body? So the most important of all is to evaluate growth and development in the growing children and also to predict adult height in cases where there are developmental disorders when the children are suffering from. To diagnose endocrine disorders and the most important of all is to determine legal responsibility especially where the age of the child is between 16 to 18 where the punishment is to be awarded and that depends upon the age that the child belongs to and last of all is identification at the time of autopsy examination especially for those bodies which are brought for autopsy but are unknown so coming on to the age estimation so the first thing that we need to know is bone age the bone age is the measure of the degree of maturation of the epiphysis to normal age related standards that form the basis of assessment of skeletal maturity that is what is called as bone age now the bone age may or may not correspond to the chronological age of the individual and the bone age is something that indicates the skeletal maturity. Yes, so what is skeletal maturity? Skeletal maturity is something which is assessed by the degree of development and ossification of the secondary ossification centers in the epiphysis. So this is a picture describing what are the various parts of the bone as far as its growth and development is concerned. So in the upper part we can see the epiphysis is there. The epiphysis is that part of the bone that develops from the secondary ossification center and diaphysis is the long tubular part that develops from the primary ossification center. And then is the metaphysis. Metaphysis is that part of the diaphysis that abuts on the epiphysis. So both epiphysis and diaphysis continue to grow until the epiphysis plate is ossified following which the diaphysis and epiphysis fuse and the growth ceases. So what are the factors which determine the growth of bone? There are so many factors, the most important of all are the genetics. Also there are environmental factors that are affected and the most uh, after genetics the most important factor are the hormonal factors. And there are many hormones like growth hormone, thyroid hormones, steroidal hormones but the most important of all hormones is estrogen and since estrogen concentration in the circulation is three times more in case of females as compared to males so the females tend to have bone maturity skeletal maturity earlier by a difference of one to two years as compared to males also bone age should be within 10 percent of the chronological age and if there's any discordance above 10 percent then that may indicate that the child is either obese or has precocious puberty because in those cases the skeletal age is accelerated. So coming on to the stages of growth for convenience for to be able to understand the uh, estimation of age properly we can divide the whole of the growth phase into stages. There are six stages which we can divide them into. So infancy is the phase up to 10 to 14 months. Toddler is up to 2 to 3 years. Then is the pre-puberty that is up to 7 to 9 years, early and late puberty is up to 13 to 14 years, late puberty up to 15 to 16 years and finally is the post pubertal phase and that is up to 17 to 19 years. So the coming on to the first of all, first stage that is infancy which is up to 10 to 14 months. So this is that age group where basically we look at three things in the x-ray of the hand and wrist. So there are two carpal bones which develop almost at the same time. In some places they write capitate develops earlier than hamate and there is a gap of one or a half month between the appearance of the two. But usually uh, we can always say that capitate and hamate will develop or will appear at three months of age. Next is the distal epiphysis of the radius. This appears at around 10 to 14 months. So wherever a range is mentioned, the lower limit corresponds to that of females and the upper limit corresponds to that of males because of the effect of estrogen. So by the age of 10 to 14 months, these are the three bones, the epiphysis of which should have 
the bones which should have appeared. The distal epiphysis of the radius and the carpal bones of the appetite and hamate should have appeared. Next stage is the toddler that is up to 2 to 3 years of age. So during this stage, bone age is roughly based on the number of recognizable epiphyseal ossification centers in the phalanges and the metacarpals. Next stage is prepubertal stage that is up to 7 to 9 years. So during this stage, the epiphysis continues to grow and as we can see the picture shows three different phases of growth. In the first one we can see the epiphysis is shorter in width as compared to the metaphysis. In the second phase we can see it has grown longer to become almost equal to the metaphysis and in the third one both metaphysis and epiphysis are equal in width. And also following this will be another stage in which capping takes place. That is, we can see spurs on both the sides where epiphysis grows and covers the metaphysis. Another factor to consider in this stage is the number of carpal bones which are there. So we can roughly say during this stage that the number of the carpal bones which we are able to recognize on x-ray roughly corresponds to the age of the child in years. Another factor to consider in this age group is the epiphysis of the ulna which appears at 5 years in females and 6 years in males. Next stage is the early pubertal stage which is up to 13 to 14 years. So again the continuous growth of epiphysis occurs and it tends to overgrow, sorry, it tends to outgrow the metaphysis and appears as tiny horns or outgrowths on, and on both the ends. Also, the styloid process of the ulna is what appears at 11 years in females and 12 years in case of males, which can be seen here in the x-ray. Next stage is late pubertal stage, which is up to 15 to 16 years. So by this time, fusion of epiphysis to metaphysis occurs. And also, the pattern of fusion is that it starts in the center and goes laterally on both the sides. So the last stage is post-pubertal stage which is up to 17 to 19 years. During this stage all the carpals, metacarpals and phalanges are completely developed and their physis are closed. Skeletal maturity is assessed based on the degree of fusion of the epiphysis of the ulna and radius. Epiphyseal fusion of ulna is something which occurs slightly earlier as compared to radius. So when we are comparing two x-rays of different ages, we can say which one is of a lower age as compared to the other based on the fusion of epiphyseal fusion of ulna and radius. Also in this picture we can see from the left to the right side there is progressive fusion of the ulna and the radial epiphysis beginning from the center and going laterally. So this is how we can estimate age based on x-rays of the hand and wrist. Thank you very much.